Good evening. Uh, my name is Bernard. I'm a DSP software engineer working for NVIDIA uh, on mobile phone baseband's. But this talk has nothing to do with that. This is something in my former life working for Nikta on SEL4. The aim behind SEL4 is based on one very simple premise, that systems that we have today are not trustworthy. Systems that we need to be trustworthy are not trustworthy. These are things that we rely on, things like ATMs, uh, voting machines, cars, planes, pacemakers. These systems are mission critical, and we need them to function. Otherwise, quite literally, people die. Uh, this is not good. Yet all of these systems have seen exploits, attacks um, in the last few years. And it's kind of terrifying to actually know that this happens. Why is this? Well, at least half a dozen times today, you've heard about trusted computing bases. And I'm not going to bore you with the details again, because I'm sure you're all aware that your trusted computing base is your attack surface. It's something that if you compromise, the game is over. So how do you make something trustworthy? Uh, it's pretty simple. You make sure that your, TC, your trusted computing base has no bugs. Easy. Earlier today, uh, Robert talking about uh, uh, security over the years have mentioned the asymmetry problem where an attacker only has to find one bug. Whereas if you're on the defense, you have to el eliminate all the bugs if you want to have guaranteed security or guarantee that your system performs correctly. And eliminating all the bugs is what we're looking at. They say that the most secure system is one that's switched off and unplugged into the corner of the room in a locked safe. Uh, while that might be true, it's not particularly useful. Part of the problem is that these systems that we're trying to keep working reliably are getting inherently complex. They're adding all this extra functionality in. And a lot of the complexity isn't part of the core mission. It's kind of distracting from the critical function. And when you have a big system, a big complex system, how on earth do you guarantee, well, any property of your system? You know, exhaustive testing becomes completely infeasible. Uh, Industry common practice is just thorough testing, whatever thorough means. But you're still not absolutely 100% sure, are there any bugs left? There is one method that we do have which can prove that there are zero bugs, asterisk. And this method is formal methods. Formal verification can actually mathematically demonstrate, based on logic, uh, that you have no bugs. But the complexity of reasoning about a system is normally exponential in the size of the system. So how do you make a system that you can still reason about? Well, the answer is you make it small. And if you have a complex system, what you can do is you decompose it into small things. And once you've decomposed it, then you can build it back up again into a more complex system. In order to do this, though, you need oh, a machine that works. In order to do this, you need strong isolation. Uh, you need strong isolation between the sensitive, uh, critical parts of your system and the more uh, larger parts, which are typically your convenience functionality. You know, a lot of systems come with a built-in Linux kernel that runs a web interface, which is nothing to do with mission-critical uh, functionality, if you're talking about, say, a pacemaker. Uh, but you want the mission-critical to keep going. So one path to get this isolation is to use an OS kernel that can give it to you. And we need to have the utmost confidence in that kernel. So this is where SEL4 comes in. Uh, SEL4 is used as the lowest level of software that runs on the machine and guarantees isolation across the entire system. So what is SEL4? SEL4 is a general purpose microkernel. It's a high-performance microkernel. Its performance is on par with uh, some of the best L4 kernels. It's developed for ARM and x86. Uh, it uses capabilities. It has policy control outside the kernel. There are no policies built into the kernel where possible. And the idea behind SEL4 is it is not itself an operating system. It is there to provide the mechanisms to create an operating system and create OS personalities on top of it. Another feature of SEL4 is that we can actually give timing guarantees, uh, worst case execution time bounds, making it suitable for real-time systems. We say it's verified, but what does that actually mean? Well, in SEL4, uh, the, 
the kernel that runs is written in C code, and it's compiled with GCC. Uh, what we have is for every operation in SEL4, there is a abstract specification of what that operation should do. Uh, for example, we've got something for suspending a thread, and in broad terms, it cancels IPCs, it sets some thread state, dequeues the thread. What we have in the SEL4 proof is a refinement that says C code implements this specification. Uh, as a side effect, it won't, it will, A, it will terminate, it'll never crash, it won't access random memory. Um, all of these are happy side effects of showing that the C code adheres to this. Well, okay, that's good. So we have a C implementation and we have some abstract model that tells you how it behaves. One question people ask is, well, that's all well and good, but mach machines don't run C, they run assembly code, they run machine code. Um, how do you know that the C is what was compiled? There's two ways to go about that, one of which is to use a verified compiler. There's one called CompCert, which will compile your C code, and it's proven to generate correct assembly. Uh, there's a second way to go about it, which is what we've undertaken, which is uh, you can actually take a compiled binary with, say, GCC, and with a bit of human intervention and an SMT solver, show that the compiled binary is the same as the C code. And that's what we've done. So now we have a binary implementation of an OS microkernel with an abstract model. This is progress. But then the next question you want to ask is, well, how do you know that the model does anything useful? How do you know there isn't a bug in the model? And so above the model, what exists is kind of three separate proofs to show that if you have a system that implements this model, we can prove confidentiality, integrity, availability. Uh, these three properties will show that uh, as separate subsystems can't interfere with each other. And at this point, we have strong isolation. We have isolation which we can actually build composable systems on top of and give guarantees across much larger systems based on these kind of small principles. There are some exceptions. Um, these are things that if you wanted to start looking at places where everything breaks down, this is where you look. Everything else is mathematically proven, so you'd have to break maths to break that. If you want to break it, uh, there are some things which aren't proven. We can talk later if you're interested. So what do you do with all this? Well, you build a system. One of the systems that we're building at the moment uh, for the DARK, DARPA Hackham's project is a they call it the Smackham Copter. It's a research vehicle, uh, an unmanned aerial vehicle. And the aim of this is to have a vehicle which is basically hack-proof, that an attacker can't compromise. Inside the architecture, you've got a control plane and a mission plane. Uh, the control plane runs on a, a kind of embedded processor, no MMU, and it does all your control loops. It's very hard real time. On the other side, you've got your mission control software, which is doing two things. It's a CPU with memory protection. It's a bit gruntier. It does your communications to your downlink, and it also uh, it does the command and control logic for the, for the flight. What you also want to do is run some other tasks on that. And it might be something like image processing or some other recon task, which at some point will involve running Linux, because everything seems to involve running Linux, or BSD, or unikernels, or something. But you don't want to have anything compromise the actual control and command of the, of the quadcopter. So you put down your layer of isolation, which is SEL4, and now you have proven guarantees that these two things can't interfere with each other. Right? Not quite. Um, the problem is that your TCP always includes other stuff. Your trusted computing base will at some point necessarily include a device driver or something. And drivers never crash. Uh, we, do, we don't have any bugs in drivers. Uh, that's a lie. Normally the way, if, if you're going to write a driver and you're not going to steal it from NetBSD, then you need four ingredients. Uh, one's normally a data sheet. One's normally the API that you're writing it to. Uh, ideally a brain, that's optional. And a bit of cursing. And after some time, you have a driver that no longer crashes and does what you want. But you have no guarantee that this actually works. One of the things you can do instead is if you can somehow formalize the data sheet, the behavior of the device, and also formalize the, uh, 
uh, AI that you're trying to develop it to, one of the things that Nictor have developed is a mechanism to actually automatically synthesize your driver software. So you never actually have to write any driver code, you just tell it how the device works. And that's kind of cool, because then a whole class of bugs is just eliminated by design. Like, you, you can't possibly write the bug if you wanted to. Um, and we've done this for a oh, couple of a range of devices, network interfaces, uh, disk controllers. And we can generate uh, drivers for SEO4, for Linux. And because we've got these two separate interfaces, it's composable. So you could write a interface description for NetBSD or for Mirage or something else, and you could compose your driver for any OS, which is kind of neat. At the moment, we don't have any proof that the driver is correct. <laughs> so somehow your bugs are currently a little bit more meta, but that's something we're, we're working on um, to actually have verified synthesis of these device drivers. Once you have that, you actually get close to a full-scale trustworthy system. So in these kinds of systems, for example, here's a typical one. You've got your OS kernel, you've got your file systems, you've got your device drivers, your network stack. Our utopia, which we're aiming for, is to be able to have everything in your trusted computer base either verified, or basically verified, either verified by manual verification. In this case, the red boxes there are things which you know, we have formal proofs for, but the proofs were done manually. Or you make sure they're correct by construction, either by code synthesis or being able to synthesize the code and the proof at the same time. And if you can do this, then you can actually say, there are zero bugs. Of course, always subject to the assumptions of whatever you're proving. What we've learned so far is the next few years will be exciting. We, we've been able to verify a microkernel, and the maths that we've done says that it's about two to 400 dollars per line of code. If you compare this with current standards of industry, if, if you want to achieve the highest criteria uh, for uh, common criteria, it's looking at a, about $1,000 per line of code. And it doesn't give you anywhere near the guarantees that you can get with formal verification. But we've, the microkernel itself was probably the limit. It took 25 person years to actually verify. To go beyond that, you need to do this code composability which requires breaking your system into components and then being able to reason about the interactions between those components. So that's a very important part of actually building larger, trustworthy systems. Uh, secondly, synthesis code uh, and proof code generation is also going to be helpful there. The exciting news is that SEL4 is on GitHub. You can go download it. There is the code, there is the proofs, there is the abstract specification. Uh, if you already know Isabel, then maybe some of this will make sense to you. Uh, otherwise, you might want to go learn Isabel and explore. Uh, if you have any questions, you can come find me at drinks later. Uh, if, you have, whoa. if you have any other questions, the person to talk to, given that this is my former life, is the project leader, uh, project leader Gernot Heiser, uh, at that address. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you.